Okay, boom. So number one would be selling paper products, okay? So recently, my team has decided, hey, this is a good contract. Like we saw one for a school system, a county school system here in Georgia. And I was like, yo, this is like great because really they're telling you exactly what they want. They're telling you how much they really need and what schools and how many things need to be replaced. So when I would say replace, we didn't know at the time that it was more than just paper products. They actually want the uh, receptacles that the paper products go into. So the toilet paper holder and the paper towel holder, they want those and the actual paper products and they want those delivered. I believe it was like on a monthly basis. I gotta go back. We're actually still working on that contract right now. So with that, I'm like, wow, this is not hard. There's a lot of details involved, like, you know, how it's supposed to be delivered, who it's supposed to be delivered to. But if you're thinking about like actual ease, like you're delivering paper products at the end of the day. Like we've all used paper towel. We've all used toilet tissue. So I was like, this is a really good thing, especially when they're telling you exactly what they want. And what was interesting about this one is I asked a lot of questions. So side note, when you are working on a bid, like something where you pulled it from the internet and you got to like follow all the steps. This is not like a hookup type thing. This is like the straight bidding process. Process. You always try, 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 try to get the opportunity before the date, the last date for questions. So what that means is you pull some down off the interwebs, April 8th, let's just say it's due May 8th. Sometimes halfway through the, the time period that they give you is the date, last date to ask questions, right? So usually you ask questions via email or they might have it within a portal. I believe Bonfire actually has a portal that you can submit questions through and there's some others. But basically, if you're going to be submitting them via email, what you're supposed to do is read through the entire proposal. Y'all don't be reading. Read through the proposal, okay? And then anything that doesn't sound clear, you submit those as questions. Now, how I tell my students, right? This is like exclusive. This is exclusive. For those who are not my students, this is exclusive information. But you're looking for errors. That's how I look at it. When you're looking at a proposal, it's like you're looking for errors. Okay. I might actually do a whole video on that, but you're looking for, this doesn't make sense. Let me ask a question about that. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're not hurting anyone by asking these questions. I don't care if a hundred people are going after the opportunity and there are, you know, 200 questions. They are supposed to answer every single one of them. And some of them might be redundant. And that really helps you in your practice when it comes to looking at bids, because you submitting questions, you get in the habit of submitting questions. Then when the answers come out, then you're going to get used to the types of questions that other people ask as well. It may be a question that you never even thought about.